Uh, I'm going to work here shortly. I just wanted to cover a little bit more about the uh, history and moral philosophy of uh, what I was talking about. Now, I was referring to a book by Robert A. Heinlein, as you saw in a previous vlog. Uh, the class is called History and Moral Philosophy. Now, it's an interesting class I wish they would actually teach nowadays, because it does make a lot of sense. I mean, on the one hand, you've got, this is how the society is run for uh, these people. Now, it is futuristic, it, and it does go into talk about the democracies like uh, the U.S. has uh, collapsing at the end of the 20th century. Now, that having been said... Uh, it's an interesting theory in the um, book that in their society all uh Voting citizens are ex-military. Now, the reason they do this is because uh, it has been proven through trial by fire <coughs> that military personnel in their society has put the well-being of the uh, of the society their race, their nation what have you ahead of their own personal survival and this makes a lot of sense that they do it this way. Now, some of you out there might disagree with me, but I am ex-military, and the reason I agree with this particular theory is because they're not allowed to vote until they've either retired or completed their term of service. Via medical retirement or actual retirement. Now a career military man in their society is 20 years, or woman in this case, because uh, their thoughts are women make better pilots than men. But not all uh, pilots are female. <laughs> Just the quote unquote best of the bunch <laughs> uh, but you have to meet certain criteria before you can even think of becoming any of the branches of service in their military and they've got really two they've got the army and they've got the navy the navy isn't limited to water like uh, it is today their navy is also their space force Whereas their army is virtually all the same. Other than that, you've got uh, the non-combat auxiliaries, such as uh, research and development, uh, equipment testing, and the like. But they're either harried, overworked, and endangered to uh, ensure that they know or that they put their own lives at stake for the betterment of their society and that their voting rights are uh, 
dear to them because of that. Or uh, they actually served in combat, whether in the Navy or in what they call the mobile infantry. Now, this makes a whole lot of sense. Having people that put the welfare of their society above their own, you do not have uh, greed as a factor in their voting for the betterment of society. Now, when they did the movies based off of this book series, they made their uh, political system, particularly in the third movie, look like communism. And it's not communism. And they discuss that. But this goes back to uh, the last vlog I did on this subject pertaining to the contradiction in terms of juvenile delinquents. Their society, as it is put, Individual freedoms are at their highest peak in recorded history. Crime rates are at its lowest peak in history. And there cannot be a rebellion to their system. Because as it is discussed in one of the classes that it goes into, in order for there to be rebellion, you have to have somebody that is not only dissatisfied with the system, but is willing to fight and die to change it. And an analogy used in uh, this book series is if you separate out the aggressive ones and make them the sheepdogs, then the sheep will not get out of line. Which is true. <clears throat> so what they did was, anybody with fighting spirit, and it's all volunteer, It's all volunteer service, you're not conscripted, you're not forced into it in any way. You are not coerced, you're not hypnotized, nothing. You have to volunteer for it. And they made it extremely hard to get in, but extremely easy to get out. which is the inverse of what uh, the U.S.'s military is. They made it very easy to get in, very hard to get out. Unless you're, you are discharged due to the needs of the service, uh, medical discharge, uncharacterized or dishonorable. Now that having been said, training for the U.S. military isn't terribly long. And when they go into it, or when he goes into it in the book, training for them... Uh, takes a year. One year of training. The, mil the U.S. military does about nine weeks. You have nine weeks at basic training and then you go into your advanced training. Okay, your individual MOS training, if you will. Like uh, for combat, infantry, and so forth, you would go to uh, 
basically an extended basic training. You're getting essentially the same thing as basic training, just more depth to it. So instead of the, just the nine weeks of basic training, you go to an additional 14. Which does make sense to an extent. if they would just extend the training even more give our military a year of training instead of uh, the 9 to 14 weeks we'd have better quality soldiers make it easy to get out hard to get in we'd have fewer in number <coughs> but better quality we'd have more highly trained soldiers for the number. Anyway, that's what I thought. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'd much appreciate it. Ride safe, my brothers. Ciao.